continued to add awards uh, since then, and most recently we added the Gartner Cool Vendor Award. And then the second housekeeping item is you'll see a panel that for me popped up on the right hand side of my a great point in the middle where it makes sense for us to take a couple questions. We'll do it then. But definitely at the end of the webinar we'll be taking them as well. I am just going to close out my email so that doesn't happen again. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. So our agenda for today, and in just a minute, I'm going to introduce Tomas Nemeth, who's with TransFreight. And he's going to talk about his organization give you a good overview of his environment, talk about the challenges he saw with VCVR and the purchasing process, and then finally why Zerto. And then I'm going to talk about Zerto virtual replication, give you an overview of the product architecture. We'll talk about application protection and the automation of DR processes. So Tomas is the manager of IT systems at Transfreight. He has over 20 years of IT experience. He's been at TransFreight for over nine years. And he leads the infrastructure team. So basically systems, network, help desk, you know, all those things roll up to Tomas. And his key responsibilities include management of the entire environment, physical and virtual. He was responsible for disaster recovery and backups and all the processes around those um, two key aspects of IT. And then he manages and maintains a large Microsoft environment, but also some other applications that you see there as well, including Citrix, um, some databases, and a transportation management system. So Tomas, at this point, I will turn it over to you. Thank you. Um, thank you for the introdu introduction, Jennifer. Hello and welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us for this webinar. So I, I'm here from Transferate to talk to you about our story, how we, how we found Zerto and why we, we think it's really um, a great product to, to protect your virtual environment. So at the first, uh, I'd like to say some words about Transferate and what we, what we are doing. So the company just celebrated the 25 years anniversary last year. And uh, we, we work in, um, in uh, the U.S. and in Canada uh, equally, 50-50% of the business in the two countries and extending in, in Mexico more and more. The company has over 20 locations in the two countries and uh, about 1,100 employees. So TransferAid's main business is the transportation and, and logistics business. We we do three-party logistics uh, services, uh, mainly working in the automotive sector and also in some recreational vehicles uh, industry. Um, and uh, work, uh, work with two data centers. So we have one data center in Canada, uh, in Ontario, and, and the other is also in Ontario about 100 miles away. So the company does uh, work in the automotive sector, which means uh, many times we become uh, part of, of this manufacturer's production. So nowadays, uh, these companies like, like Toyota, they don't uh, build any warehouse for parts. They, they receive the parts that they build into the cars right away. Uh, any given part uh, will be built into, in, into the cars in less than four hours. So nothing can be on the floor for four hours or, or longer. Uh, obviously, this requires a, a lot of discipline and uh, following the rules from the logistics companies. Uh, this is called just-in-time delivery. And, and that's the best what, what TransferAid does uh, the, the best way. Uh, so some of our uh, 
our uh, customers are, are Toyota, like uh, I mentioned, and Honda, uh, Chrysler, Suzuki, Yamaha, uh, Bombardier in Quebec and in, in Mexico, and uh, Emerson, uh, these kind of companies. Um, maybe we can go to the next slide now. Thank you. So the study basically starts in 2007 where uh, we set up the first virtual cluster. We started to use uh, VMware virtualization in And as you know, um, you, you really needed shared storage that we didn't have. We didn't have a SAN uh, at that point. So in 2007, we purchased the uh, and, um, and uh, workstations as well. But, but the purchase included two EMC storage uh, CX320 Clarions uh, and Y2 because of the two data centers. So b before that, that time we ran some Unix systems with, with different replication tool, but as our transportation management system changed and was completely replaced uh, and became Microsoft uh, uh, system, fully Microsoft system, uh, now we needed uh, an application for VMware and, and, the, and the VMware system started to grow. So at that point, at that point uh, we purchased that package from, from Dell which also included the EMC storage and an EMC replication tool called Recover Point. Uh, you may have heard that uh, EMC purchased uh, that, that product from a company called Kashia uh, just in uh, the beginning of 2007 or end of 2006. So shortly after that we, we bought the system from them. It was a version 1 point something. So we were at that point uh, really at the, at the bleeding edge uh, compared to transfer it is not trying to, to use uh, that edge technology anywhere. But uh, in, in this case we, we were there. And uh, setting up the system wasn't wasn't easy. Was was really a complex solution. Recover Point uh, consists of physical and uh, uh, software components, and the physical components for high availability have to be redundant everywhere. So there were lots of lots of cables involved, and uh, and set up. Uh, and at a point, we had three different choices. Uh, basically to run recover point. Um, one was something called K-Driver when in every virtual machine you would need to install a piece of software that splits the I.O. Uh, to the storage and to the replication uh, direction, the RPA, which is the recover point appliance. Uh, that would be very cumbersome in a, in a larger environment to, to maintain. Another choice would have been something called SANTAP that Cisco produced only and Brocade started to produce at, at a point. Uh, that's a much better solution but also much more expensive. So we didn't choose that. But EMC started to uh, develop something uh, for us and for other customers too. We were one of the first adapters uh, called SAN Splitter. Basically that, that's what we established uh, here at TransferAid, so the I.O. comes from the host and in the SAN storage processor it gets split uh, and goes to two directions to the storage and to the um, uh, recover point appliance. And recover point uh, replicated the data, everything that we set up to be replicated uh, and it, it replicated data based on LUNs, not on virtual machines. Uh, also 
you could fail over the storage with recover point, but the virtual machines wouldn't fail over. So you, we needed another piece, and that was uh, from VMware called Site Recovery Manager. And I'm sure many of you uh, may be familiar with it because that product has been out there for a very long time. Um, it's not a very simple product. Uh, also, setting it up uh, and, and integrating it with your storage requires uh, quite a few steps. But uh, basically, that's what we built up in 2007 and the beginning of 2008. And we were, at the time, we were quite happy with, with the solution because although it was complex, it provided fairly low uh, RPO, sorry, RTO. Uh, for us. And um, the system was running for a few years, but uh, challenges started to, to happen in uh, 2011. So maybe we can go to the next slide, Jennifer. Thank you. So in, uh, 20, uh, in 2011, we, we learned that uh, Dell and EMC were not working uh, very well anymore, and it was because of the fact that uh, Dell acquired the uh, uh, Compaland Technologies, another competing product with the, with the EMC product lines. Earlier, they purchased the Ecologic, uh, which is an iSCSI storage solution, and uh, EMC couldn't work with Dell anymore, so they, they split up, and it, it put us in a really difficult uh, situation. Uh, Transferit is not that huge company that we could uh, we could uh, work with uh, numerous big companies, uh, big vendors. So so we needed a solution uh, to replace our storage and uh, also our recover point or our replication technology. Uh, so we started to look around in 2011, uh, end of or second half of 2011. And uh, we also knew at that time that EMC would not uh, renew our, uh, our maintenance on the storage on the Clarion, uh, which expired in 2012, uh, July, so after five years. We contacted them. They said there is no way to, to get more warranty on, on that. And because it's a part of our production, and you understand that uh, the IT is absolutely critical, services and availability for our business. We just couldn't run without uh, supported storage. So we had to look at uh, what other options we have. And, and that was for both, for, for uh, replacing the storage and also setting up a replication and failover system that works. Um, yeah, may, maybe we can go to the next slide now. So then I can talk about the purchase process and, and how, we, how we come to, to the decision to work with, with Zerto. We obviously uh, look, looked around and, and one, of the, one of the obvious uh, uh, choice would have been to replace the storage with uh, what Dell has, because being a Dell shop, it would be easier to just to work with one company, and, and Dell was giving us everything else we needed. But uh, we figured if we buy two component units, then um, the application that comes with it, the built-in application is really snapshot-based, and it doesn't even come any anywhere close to what uh, Recover Point was able to do on the RTO side. So we also looked at other other storages like uh, 3PAR and EMC, VNX, and some, some others. But basically, the built-in replication to any storage always always based on um, on snapshot that just doesn't work for for our business and our requirements. So we we had to change direction and and come up with uh, with some goals what we wanted to achieve with this project. And uh, we, we said we wanted to keep the low RPOs, just like in, in Recover Point, but also improve the RTOs if, if possible. And uh, we wanted to make asymmetric, uh, the, the sites asymmetric uh, for cost savings. For the DR site, we didn't like 
uh, that uh, we had to spend the same amount of money in the past to keep it um, on, on the same versions and same levels as the, as the main site when it doesn't really get used uh, uh, much time in, in any year. So asymmetric uh, site configuration was one of the one of the requirements. Uh, of course, uh, symmetric. Uh, if if we if we had a synchronous replication, uh, that uh, luxury, then we wouldn't have uh, uh, we would have a different uh, different situation. But that wasn't available, and it's still not available to us. We, we don't have that closed site uh, with with fiber uh, connection. And we wanted to make sure that we can upgrade uh, these systems in the future in our pace. So we didn't want the vendors to dictate that, uh, OK, this is your time now to replace everything. So throw them out the window and, and, and just buy new, new storage. Uh, obviously, that wasn't appealing to us. Uh, also, one of the goals was to make the system less, less complex. And, uh, and uh, keep it flexible or make it more flexible and, uh, and keep it simple if possible. So the purely that solution didn't seem to be a, a good way. We, we kept uh, researching and, uh, and, and we learned about something called uh, storage virtualization, which uh, is basically looked at or can be looked at as an additional layer between the host and the, and the storage. And that uh, storage virtualization layer is able to replicate our data. So one of the nice systems is uh, from IBM. It's called IBM SVC, uh, SEN volume uh, copy. And, uh, um, and we went to Toronto to, to look at their, their solution, and it was really, really nice. Uh, so is the price tag on it. So very early we, we had to give up on, on that idea to work with the IBM solution. But we, we tried to research some, something similar in a, in a less expensive way. Another company we looked at uh, is called DataCore. And they do the storage virtualization. But unfortunately, their solution was based on Windows 2008 server. So can you imagine that today, in a highly demanding virtual infrastructure, you uh, put all your basket, all your eggs in, in the same basket, and, and your storage only depends on a single uh, Windows server? Well, it wasn't working for us. They, they came back to us. We had several discussions, and they tried to mitigate the risk. But there was no way to make that solution highly available the way we, we needed, although it would have done the application piece. You would still need to work with, uh, with the VMware Site Recovery Manager. So we kept on researching, and we, we found Falcon Store, which uh, is in a way similar to what DataCore does, but their solutions seem to be better, more firm, more highly available, and more matured. So we went ahead with lots of discussions, and and we uh, really really started to to like what what they had uh, there. But uh, unfortunately, uh, you still have to insert another layer between the host and the storage, and you still have to purchase hardware that uh, will expire at some point, and you will need to replace and repurchase it in the future. So that was on the table. Then we found Zerto, which is a truly hypervisor-based replication uh, that does both replicating the data, replicating the VMs, and failing them over and back. So that was a huge, huge win for us when, when we found uh, Zerto. And uh, very, very quickly, we were able to learn how it works and uh, how it needs to be set up and how you can manage it. OK, next slide, please. 
So we quickly made a decision uh, at that time in very early 2012 that we didn't want anything else but Zerto for the data replication and failover. And uh, we also decided that we bought a Dell component uh, storage, but only one for our primary side. And we shipped the old uh, EMC storage to the DR side as a, as a secondary storage unit and to be used as, as parts. And uh, that way we could save a lot of money because instead of buying two storage units, we just purchased one. And uh, with Zerto, we set up the, the replication and installed the, the system in a, in a very short time with the Zerto engineers. I, I want to say that uh, at that time in 2012, early 2012, Zerto was also version 1. Point something. So 1.4 or 1. Point something. So it was uh, in a fairly early stages uh, for, for them to and uh, and uh, we just found ourselves to be again in a kind of edge technology, which we didn't mean to do. But I tell you that it was a it was a great change and was very easy switch and uh, fairly seamless switch. And uh, another piece of information here, which uh, we found out at the time, that uh, some of the Kasha employees, so the company in Israel who created Kasha, who sold that product to EMC, they were uh, amongst the, the people who established Zerto and, and came up with the idea of Zerto. With some other uh, great uh, minds from Microsoft and IBM XIV uh, at, at the time. And uh, what it means, that, that fact that all the, all the knowledge they built into Recover Point, uh, they, they had that already and even more ideas and more, uh, more, more background to, to build Zerto really quickly and really well. And I personally really like the, the idea that the application is now not on, on a separate layer, not in an additional layer, and not on the storage level, but within the, the hypervisor, and it's purely software, 100% software. So we don't need to uh, worry about replacing the hardware because uh, there is no hardware that is associated with the failover or the replication system itself. Uh, why, why we like uh, Zerto? Because it removes the storage piece, the storage vendor lock-in. So we achieved the goal that we became software, uh, sorry, storage agnostic uh, at the time, and that's still very, very enjoyable and, and really great. Uh, for our future plans, it makes much, much easier than it was in the past. Um, the, the system is very flexible, very scalable. Uh, now you, you just deploy, uh, deploy the system which creates a, a small uh, virtual appliance on any host and uh, it scales itself. What it means if we are able to put more load more virtual machines on any given host, the Zerto system knows when it automatically needs to uh, needs to deploy another uh, VRA, another uh, virtual appliance to handle that load. And it's completely seamless to us. Uh, we were able to to keep the very low RPO, the require point objective, so it's done in, in seconds. Uh, we like that. We actually say we wanted that, uh, and the RTO improved to a few minutes now. And uh, it, it provides continuous data protection. So what it means, uh, uh, every every so often, it creates uh, automatically creates those bookmarks when you can roll back your data to if you want to, but you can manually also create uh, those bookmarks if, if you want to. The failover can be uh, automatic or can be manual and uh, it, it uh, gives you an option to test 
your DR plans uh, without uh, affecting your production at all. So we, we really achieved all our goals we wanted to and we were very happy with the, with the solution. We were able to save uh, some, some money, some serious money because not buying new hardware and making the asymmetric setup and also for long run because we didn't introduce a new hardware piece for that application itself. Um, the Zerto solution can do uh, for us, can do block and file replication, file based. So if, if your uh, virtual environment is, uh, is um, using NFS or is using block based storage, Zerto replicates that both. And we at TransferAge are uh, utilizing both uh, kinds of storage. Also fiber or iSCSI, so it's completely protocol independent and uh, storage vendor independent. So today we run a component storage uh, at the main side, EMC storage at the second side, and at any time we can replace any of the storage vendors or anything and it, it completely seamless the change and, and Zerto doesn't care. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, it's the, the other, so the, the last thing that because it, uh, it uh, achieves both uh, the replication and the failover, we were able to get rid of the site recovery manager, uh, the related maintenance cost every year, and also all the complexity that comes with it. So that's how our system became simpler. Okay, I think we can go to the next slide. So uh, today I want to say that uh, this is the best way to replicate and, and protect uh, uh, virtual machines, uh, at least for the Microsoft applications. Uh, we are fully Microsoft shop and uh, and I, th I cannot even imagine anything easier than, than using Zerto. Uh, installation was very simple, configuration very simple. We are able to do this on our own with, with my team. Uh, if, if we need support, we, we can call Zerto support, but they don't have to be here with us, even virtually, to execute any, any uh, updates, any upgrades because we can do it ourselves. It's well documented and, and easy to, to execute. Another big uh, advantage uh, of Zerto is that it doesn't use any agents or any drivers on the, on the virtual machines. So Jennifer will tell us about the technology in, in more details. So you will see how, how this works, but, uh, but it really doesn't leave any, any footprint on, on your system and it doesn't mess up anything when, when you install it. It's a kind of set it and forget it technology. Um, and uh, in, the, in the future we will have to be ready for a potential data center move to another location and Zerto will help us greatly with, with that uh, project because uh, everything is software now and is true and uh, it will be much easier with Zerto than without it. Uh, I think that was all from me, Jennifer. Do we have any questions? Thanks, Max. Um, we don't have any questions just yet. So I'll go through my slides and then if you have any questions, we'll take them at the end of my section. Sound good, Tomas? Thank you. Thank you, yes. Okay, okay great. So if we take a step back and look at where replication was, and you heard Tomas talk about a lot of the issues around replication and storage, and it really creates a lot of issues in terms of alignment, um, the configuration that would normally have to be done when protecting a Microsoft application, Tomas was able to avoid that because it is a virtual aware solution. So Zerto kind of recognizing that replication would be in the storage layer, took it from the storage layer and pulled it up into the hypervisor, and now there's alignment across your IT strategy. Everything is virtualized, including the replication, 
and it really helps you move towards a software-defined data center. I find it quite hilarious when other vendors promote software-defined data centers with hardware. At Zerto, we promote a software-defined data center with software. So with that, we have Zerto. It's virtual aware. So what do I mean by that? We protect VMs and VMDKs. So we're not interested in any of the storage constructs of the environment. As I just mentioned, it's a software-only solution. It's tier one enterprise class. And what do I mean by that? I mean, we protect applications. We deliver very aggressive service levels, as you heard from Tomas. And through the journal, we're able to deliver continuous data protection. And I'll review that in just a couple of slides. And then lastly, everything is automated. Because when you're in a BCDR scenario, any manual process is an opportunity for an error. And when you're having a data center outage, that's not the time to have a manual process. So with Zerto, we automate the failover, fill back, all of those steps. So it's literally just click a few buttons, and then the recovery process begins executing. So here we have a simple overview of our architecture. I say simple because here we have two sites, and Zerto can protect multiple sites. We have the Zerto Virtual Manager, which is a plug-in right into vCenter server. That's the only piece of software that you'll touch. And then on each ESX host within the environment, we add a VRA. The Virtual Replication Appliance is what's actually going to replicate the data. So you can see we can replicate from anything to anything, and Tomas has put that into real live practice. It's highly scalable, so what I mean by that is we, as you add an ESX host, you just add another VRA to your environment. With other solutions that are reliant on a hardware appliance, that solution might work okay when you have five ESX hosts, but as you get to eight or ten, then it becomes a little bit more of an issue as that appliance gets taxed. The continuous block level replication delivers RPOs of seconds. The journal delivers a recovery point every couple of seconds, so and that holds one hour up to five days worth of historical information. So with the journal, say you did an update or a patch or something at noon today, and it corrupted the file or something happened, you could roll back the environment to 11.59 and 52 seconds and completely undo that upgrade. And then we also have some bandwidth optimization and WAN resiliency to make sure you know we're not dominating the network because this is a production environment. You're using these applications to run your business. We know that DR has to be there, but we don't want it dominating the environment. So with application protection, we've designed something called a virtual protection group. And this is the unit of replication that we use within Zerto Virtual Replication. So all the VMs that are part of an application get put together in a group. And no matter where they are in the environment, those VMs will be protected exactly the same. Through this group, we're able to protect, to um, leverage the advanced features of VMware, so things like vMotion, storage vMotion, DRS. With other hardware-based solutions, you need to disable those because the relationship between the VM and the LUN is so important. With Zerto, because we're virtual aware and we're aware when DRS is moving a VM around, you can keep those really cool features working. At this level, we'll also um, configure a few portions of your BCDR policy. For example, boot order. So you'd like to have the database server up before the, rep before the application server and then the web server. And also re-IPing. So if you need to have a different IP address on your target site versus your protected site, that's all configured at the virtual protection group level. So we've talked a lot about the data, grouping the data together, and making sure it's configured correctly. And through that configuration is how we're able to deliver on the promise of automation. So you saw the virtual machines get replicated over to the target site. Then once you hit the big arrow, Zerto is automatically going to build those VMs with the right order of fidelity in the order that you have specified and with re-IPing if you needed to do that. We don't have shadow VMs at the target site. We build the VMs as they're needed. With our click to test anytime feature, you'll know exactly how long that recovery is going to take. 
So you can do a disaster recovery test during business hours. Replication will still be happening. And you'll know that, gee, in my normal production scenario, it's going to take me two minutes and 43 seconds to recover SharePoint or SQL or whatever it is. The off-site cloning feature, so you're able to make a copy of an application on your replication site. This can be used for things like test and development, um, backups, other uses for that data, because you have it on your target site, so you might as well make use of it. One way that Zerto helps you make use of it is through our off-site backup feature. So this dramatically reduces the impact on your production applications, because what you're going to do is, as I said, that data is already replicated. It's at the target site. We now take a backup from that replicated data. That, replicate, that backup can be stored locally. It can be stored to a third site. And we also enable it to go to public clouds like Amazon. Now, the information can only be stored in Amazon. We don't run there. But it's a way to support a cloud strategy if that's the goal of your business. Simple management from anywhere. So you can see it plugs right into vCenter. We also have a browser-based interface. And you'll see there, there's the arrow in the bottom right-hand side of the screen for a failover. That's what you click to fail over the VMs, VPGs, rather. It's also natively multi-tenant. And as I mentioned, we support multiple sites. So you can replicate from several sites to one shared infrastructure, helping reduce capital costs. And through the simple um, single user, single pane of glass view of the environment, we help reduce operational costs. We have bi-directional replication support. So some customers of ours don't have a dedicated DR site. They use production in both sites. And then they replicate or move applications back and forth to better utilize assets. Zerto can support that. And you can replicate from anywhere to anywhere. So we have customers replicating from Waltham, Massachusetts to London, from Texas to Dubai. And they're seeing uh, RPOs you know, less than a minute. From London to Waltham, you're seeing 12 seconds. Texas to Dubai, it's 28 seconds. And then lastly, we do enable replication between um, within a single vCenter instance. So if you have a main data center and then you have a smaller robo kind of scenario, we would enable you to deliver a DR for that smaller remote office with single vCenter support. And then, of course, we can go to cloud providers. So comprehensive reports. We have reports for a lot of things. Uh, the audit report is one that we get the most compliments on because every company has auditors, and they want to see what the DR test is going to look like, what the steps are going to take, and how long each step in that process is going to take. This report delivers all that information. So now when you do your DR test, you run this report. You can give it to your auditor and tell them it's going to take approximately nine minutes to recover our entire environment, and here are the reports supporting that information. And we also deliver some reports on resource consumption at the source and target site so you can see exactly what a VM is consuming. So this just helps you with longer-term planning in terms of what your storage requirements might be, processing power, and bandwidth. Oh, and then last but not least, the backup report. So if you're using the offsite backup feature, this will run daily and send you a report that, hey, here's all the backups that were executed, and this is what's available to you. So you heard Tomas talk about this, this very complex process, coordinating a storage product with a virtualization product, and putting together a complete BCDR solution. Coordinating the two products can be a full-time job in itself. And with Zerto, we saw that there was a way to improve this, and we did. So we took this complex, manual, and inflexible process and boiled it down to just five simple steps. Everything's in a single pane of glass.
mentioned, it really is a set it and forget it kind of technology because it's going to your environment evolve. So we talked a lot about private cloud BCDR. Um, we also support replication to our cloud providers. We work with many cloud service providers if you were interested in looking at a managed service. And then as you become comfortable with your cloud provider, maybe there's an application that's very difficult to manage, give that whole thing to the cloud provider and they'll take on the production and DR environment. And as I mentioned, we have many, many cloud service providers that we work to work with. Um, it's over 150, I believe we're around 175 at this point. So we have a truly virtualware solution built for enterprise class products. Um, application level protection because your end users are saying, you know, hey, we can't get into SharePoint. They're not saying I can't get into this table space or whatever. Um, scalable, simple, easy to use, and ready for your cloud strategy, whether that's public, private, or hybrid. So I do see I have a couple questions. Um, so if you want to email us directly, feel free. My name is Jennifer Gill, as I mentioned, and Tomas Nemeth has agreed to take questions also. Before we answer the questions, I do want to do promotion for our next webinar, which is two weeks from today, same time, same place. And it's around scary DR stories. And if you go to our website, uh, which is www.zerto.com forward slash blog, you can submit your scary DR stories. And we're going to be uh, sharing those on our blog as well to kind of hear some of the some of them have been funny, some of them have been very scary, and some of them have been very interesting. So, so here's that question that came in, and actually I don't know if they saw the single vCenter support, but someone asked, do I need vCenter to replicate one ESX to another in another site? So no, you don't. Um, with single vCenter support, you can have a single vCenter stretched across two sites you won't get the benefit of bi-directional replication, though. It'll be more uh, replication will go from one site to the other, and that's it. You don't have the bi-directional option. Um, and then someone asked, is Azure supported for cloud service, or is it only Amazon? So today, it's only Amazon. And a surprise presenter for everyone, as you didn't know, we had Shannon Snowden here. He's our senior technical marketing architect. I'll let him provide a little color on Azure as well. Yeah, so right now, as Jim said, it's uh, it's Amazon, but um, certainly you can imagine any cloud provider eventually will uh, will be supported because of our Cloud Fabric vision, which is another presentation if you'd like to see that. Uh, so the idea there is any any cloud, basically any hypervisor anywhere. So uh, we're carrying on the agnostic nature of, the, of Zerto. Great. And someone asked, does Zerto support real-time replication? So it is asynchronous replication. It's very, very close to real-time. Like we have customers have RPOs. You know, depending on the uh, bandwidth they have available to them and the distance, you know, we do have uh, customers who are seeing three to five seconds of RPO. So very, very close to real-time, but it is not a uh, real-time replication technology. But it's very, very close. So I don't know if there are any other questions. Those are the only three I see so far. Um, oh. Does it use snapshot for replication? We do not use snapshots for replication. If we were to use snapshots for replication, there is no way we would be able to get three, five, six second RPOs. Because the snapshot is taking a picture of the entire virtual machine. It takes quite a bit of time to execute that. Additionally, it puts a very uh, large amount of overhead on your ESX host. We've done some benchmarking on the virtual replication appliances to see what the impact is to their environment. And it's 2 to 5%. It's, it's very, very low overhead. And Tomas, I don't know if you could comment what the impact to your applications was when you installed Zerto? Yeah, so in, in our case, it's also just down to a few seconds. And uh, that, that's what I try to say, that if you 
have a campus kind of setup when you can replicate your data synchronously, then this technology is not, not for you. But there are very few companies who have that luxury, very, very few cases when, when you have that setup and that close distance. If you build a secondary data center because you uh, want uh, disaster recovery, you want it to make sure that if anything happens on the main site, you can uh, quickly fail over to a second site, then uh, then Zerto comes into play and Zerto will be able to replicate as fast as your network. That's how if you have a, a fast network, you can be down to a few seconds. In our case, uh, for the most aggressive uh, VPGs, uh, we have, so the, the, where the business critical systems run, we, we are um, under five seconds. And that, that's, uh, that's the setting we have in place. We, we would get, what it means, you would get an alert from Zerto if the five seconds RPO is not met, which happens usually once during the, the night when we do backups on, on that line and we get those emails, but uh, uh, during the day we are constantly done under five seconds uh, for those VPGs. Great. And Tomas, what was the overhead when you installed Zerto? Did you notice any impact at all to your environment? Most say no, but hey, you can... Absolutely not. No, no. The, so, so what you should maybe know about our, our environment that we are proud of running a, a lean environment, uh, meaning that we do watch our, our resources. So we, we have on, on the main production cluster, we have five hosts and um, we are running about 100 uh, VMs on, on those five hosts. At any given time, we can easily turn off any, of the, any one of the five hosts. We would still be able to provide the same performance uh, at that uh, workload because we have that, uh, uh, that redundancy but uh, we are very compressed, meaning that uh, we can go down and even run uh, uh, 40 VMs. Not any 40, but uh, at maximum we did run 40 VMs on, on one host. Uh, obviously, it, uh, everything uh, depends on the size of those VMs. What I'm saying, our VMs are, are, are lean to just the amount of memory and CPU we assign that, that we really need that. We had lots of arguments with other software vendors because they easily just say you need that much uh, memory, that many CPUs, and so on and so on, and we don't follow their, their uh, recommendation. We, we just make it uh, the, the, with a minimum configuration and we grow that configuration. So we really watch how much resources any VM takes, including the Zerto uh, VRAs. And, and the Zerto VRAs will be automatically deployed uh, from the ZVM when, when you set up Zerto, and, and they are really tiny, very tiny uh, virtual machines with one CPU in, and two gigabyte of RAM. So it's, it's not, not, not much if you think about resources today. And I can tell you that even that configuration is not running on 100%, not even running close to, to maximize those resources. So I'm per personally very, very satisfied with the, with the utilization, and, and it's extremely low overhead to run Zerto. So we have a base package that supports 15 virtual machines, and with one year maintenance, the uh, list price for that is just under 14,000. And then as you buy more and more volume, of course, then that price you know starts to get a little lower and a little lower. And then I think we have another question here for Shannon. So if some disaster occurs at my primary location, how can I fail over to my secondary location? Well, as you can imagine, being architected as a DR product and a, and a, even a migration product as well, uh, you, you see the same controls and the same management from either the source side or the target site. So in a true disaster situation, it's assumed that that source site is gone. 
or unavailable. So you would be able to be at the target location, log into it, and recover the VMs and recover the VPGs and get everything back up and running from that target location. So it's a, you can either push it from the source site or you can definitely orchestrate all of it and bring it up at the target site as well. Okay, and someone's asking, does the uh, replication appliance need a Windows OS, or they come as a virtual appliance? I think they come as a Linux machine. I'm going to let Shannon talk about yeah, that. Yeah, they're, they're just a little Debian Linux um, appliance. The Zerto Virtual Manager runs as a Windows service, so there's actually two components. There's the uh, Windows service that's uh, the manager, and then that interfaces with uh, vCenter and uh, also soon to be SCBMM for Hyper-V support. And then once you have that in place, then as Tomas was saying, uh, you, you, you automatically deploy the, the VRAs to each host, and then the VRAs are those, those uh, Linux clients. Okay, so I'm asking how the product is licensed. So um, it's by protected VM. So as I mentioned, the base package, it's 15 VMs, if that's what you want to protect. Now you might have you know 30 VMs in your environment, but only 15 require protection. You have tests and development or something like that that just doesn't need disaster recovery. So we're licensed to buy protected virtual machine. So lots of good questions. And being protected by uh, or licensed by the protected VM allows you a lot of flexibility. So as we get into the cloud fabric idea of going anywhere then you're not trying to keep track of all kinds of different uh, platforms of how it's licensed. You're very independent of that because if you have 10 protected VMs, that's, that's what you're paying for. Right. Okay, and I think that's the last question. So I'll give one more plug for our scary DR stories. Because they have been, I will say, they have been really fun so far. And so if you have a fun DR story, it doesn't have to be long. You know, you can explain it in five sentences. We'd really love to hear it, and we're going to put them up on the blog. We're out on Twitter at zertocorp.com, at zertocorp, sorry, no dot .com on Twitter, just at zertocorp. Um, the prizes so, are good, too, by the way. That's okay. There are some pretty cool prizes. So we have Halloween t-shirts, uh, scary DR stories, so that we're doing some fun stuff with it. So it's that time of year. We thought we'd have some fun with it. So, Tomas, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Oh, no problem, Ma. I enjoyed it too. Thank you. Great. And everyone else, thank you for sticking around. Um, if you have any other questions, certainly feel free to reach out to us. Check out our website. Check out the blog. Thanks so much. Thank you.